Well, you already mentioned sources, and I do want to talk a little bit about sources because it was um, really fascinating of what you were using for the book. And you, you're heavily relying on newspapers. And in part, I kind of, let's start kind of this, this line of question a little bit with what are we looking at when we think of 19th century Civil War era newspapers? Who publishes them? Where do they appear? What do they cover? Just in kind of basic terms. Yes. Yeah, so certainly 19th century newspapers, there were more in the North than in the South, but there is a growing Southern print culture. The newspapers relied heavily on, um, you know, what we would now consider the wire reports, mm -hmm. basically. But much of that actually was coming with news from abroad. So a typical newspaper in the South in the middle of the 19th century might be about four pages long, and maybe a page of that would be the foreign news. So Southerners who, the Southerners who are reading newspapers were well informed of these events that are happening in Europe. Now, beyond that, these newspapers, many of them are partisan, so either Democratic or Whig, many of these newspapers are increasingly Southern rights, states rights, as we head toward the late antebellum period. So they're not unbiased. They certainly have their own particular takes on these issues. That said, what I really found in these sources is across the board, what, whichever party, whether it was from a small town or a larger city, from the upper south, from the lower south, these international perspectives really were resonating throughout surprising numbers of these southern newspapers. It was very much just a part of what was being published and the way that white southerners were talking about these issues. And that's part of the reason I used these newspapers to help me answer my questions about international influences on Southern identity. This is really a project at its core about the shaping of public opinion. On some level, that's kind of what nationalism was all about, shaping public opinion and trying to convince your fellow white Southerners, convince an international audience, convince the North that this particular interpretation of Southern nationhood was valid. It's the one that should be followed. And so when I'm really trying to trace ideas of shaping public opinion, then newspapers were a great way to understand not necessarily what people were believing, but to understand how they're trying to shape those beliefs, how they're trying to shape and create that nationalism. And the newspapers actually include not just um, general reports, not just editorials, letters to the editor. They also frequently published political speeches. They published congressional speeches. And so they really represent a fairly broad range of the information that was being put out there to try and shape white Southerners' ideas about their own nationhood. 